Meek Mill has proven himself to be one of the most talented rappers to come onto the hip-hop scene in the last decade. The 32-year-old rapper from Philadelphia has had several massive songs in his career, with his most recent being Going Bad, featuring Drake, which has sold over 2 million records, making it a double platinum song. But despite being one of the most talented rappers in hip-hop right now, Meek Mill has been making headlines for years due to his ongoing legal battles. A lot of rappers seem to have the same issues, but with Meek, it's a little bit different. It has been made public numerous times that Meek Mill's judge in this case, Janice Brinkley, has had it out for Meek from the beginning, and is making his legal process way more challenging than it should be. Curious on how all this happened and how it played out for Meek? Well, then we have you covered. Here is an exclusive inside look at the criminal history of Meek Mill. Meek Mill's first documented arrest happened on January 24, 2008, when he was just 18 years old. According to multiple reports, Philadelphia's Narcotics Field Unit, NFU for short, obtained a warrant to search Meek Mill's residence after they claimed that he was seen selling crack to a police informant. While police were outside his house preparing to raid the place, Meek returned home from the local corner store. Meek was carrying a weapon at the time, but quietly tried to ditch it before confronting the police, which later backfired on him because the police saw him doing this and eventually detained him. An NFU member, Reggie Graham, who made the arrest, claims that Meek Mill had pointed the weapon at him before they detained him. Meek denies these claims and instead said that the police used Meek's head as a battering ram to open up the front door of his house. Inside of the house, police found around $30,000 in cash that apparently belonged to his cousin that sold Kush. Meek Mill was ultimately arrested on various charges relating to drug dealing and weapons possession. He ended up spending several months in county jail before finally going before a judge on August 19, 2008, where Meek Mill faced 19 counts in total. The judge in Meek's case, Janice Brinkley, acquitted all of Meek's co-defendants and eventually found Meek guilty of seven charges. Brinkley sentenced Meek to two years in county prison and eight years of probation following his release. Meek was released in early of 2009 after agreeing to a deal where he would take five years of parole in order to be released early. This decision would cause a lot of problems in the future for Meek Mill. Meek stayed out of trouble for over three years following his 2009 release, but on October 31st, 2012, all that changed. While wrapping up a promo run in New York to promote his first album, Meek was pulled over by police due to his extremely dark tinted windows. When officers approached the vehicle, they claimed to have smelled Kush coming from the vehicle, and when they asked to search the car, Meek refused. Meek ended up being arrested for not allowing the police to search his car. The cops then impounded Meek's vehicle and held him in a holding cell overnight. Meek was eventually released the next day, but claimed that the arrest made him miss out on a lot of money in an endorsement deal with Puma. The losses were reported to be a payment being reduced to $650,000 from the original $2 million. Yikes. After Judge Brinkley got word of Meek Mill's arrest, she ordered Meek to appear in court. During this hearing, she ordered Meek to complete two drug tests, both of which turned out to be clean. But despite being clean, Brinkley still charged Meek with a probation violation. The punishment of the violation was revoking Meek's ability to schedule and perform shows. This punishment is weird to me because it's basically saying, hey, you can't show up to work anymore, which if Meek worked like a normal nine to five job would ultimately lead to him, you know, being fired. The situation didn't end there because on December 18th, 2012, Meek allegedly violated probation again by continuing to book concerts after being told not to. This led to Brinkley putting Meek on restricted travel, which forces Meek to stay in his hometown. Three months after this decision was made, Meek was due in court again after he allegedly left Pennsylvania without notification. The excuse he gave to the judge was that his schedule can change very quickly and he asked for leniency, which he eventually got because Brinkley let this one slide with no consequences. At the end of this hearing, Meek requested to get a new probation officer after claiming to have a problem with the one he currently has, but Judge Brinkley denied this request. On June 28th, 2013, Meek was required to appear in court once again after he was accused of making comments about his probation officer on Twitter that led to Meek's fans sending threats to the probation officer. 
During the hearing, Meek's lawyer and assistant district attorney, Noel A. DeSantis, got in a heated argument over these claims and eventually ended with Judge Brinkley ordering Meek to attend etiquette classes to teach Meek Mill how to conduct himself online and claimed it was more important than any concerts he might have. Over a year later, on July 13th, 2014, Meek had a probation hearing that lasted a lengthy four hours. During the hearing, Brinkley aired out everything Meek Mill was allegedly doing wrong, like failing to give his probation officer a working phone number, being disrespectful to his probation officer, failing to get a judge's permission before booking out of town shows, and a few other things were mentioned as well. This hearing ended with Judge Brinkley determining that Meek Mill was in technical violation of his probation and ended up revoking Meek's probation and sentencing him to three to six months in jail with an additional five years of probation following his release. Meek was eventually released on December 12, 2014 after serving almost five months. Over a year after being released, Meek Mill was once again found guilty of a probation violation by Judge Brinkley after failing to report his travel plans. This violation resulted in Meek being banned from working and performing until his sentencing, which was scheduled for February 5th, 2016. Fast forward to that hearing, Judge Brinkley sentenced Meek to 90 days on house arrest, which would begin on March 1st, 2016 and end on June 1st, 2016. After he was released, Meek had a lavish welcome home party at Playhouse in Los Angeles. Meek continued to stay out of trouble for over a year, but on March 15, 2017, while at the St. Louis airport, Meek Mill was arrested and charged with assault after an airport employee attempted to get a picture with him. The police let him go moments later, but he was still charged and summoned to appear in court on a later date. The case was ultimately thrown out in October, later that year. Months later, Meek Mill was arrested yet again while in New York for his appearance on The Tonight Show. According to multiple reports, Meek saw some kids riding dirt bikes around the city and kindly asked if he could ride one. Meek's cameraman was on Instagram Live at the time and captured a helmetless Meek Mill popping wheelies on a dirt bike throughout the streets of New York. The next day, the NYPD tracked him down and arrested him for one felony count of reckless endangerment. This charge was later reduced to a misdemeanor and eventually got dismissed completely, but Judge Brinkley was not happy about this. On November 6, 2017, Meek was required to appear in court for another probation hearing, and it did not go well for him. Judge Brinkley ended up sentencing Meek Mill to two to four years in a state prison after getting arrested for assault and reckless endangerment in the first place, despite all these charges being dropped. She stated, I gave you break after break and you basically just thumbed your nose at this court while handing down this lengthy sentence to Meek. After the shocking news hit the internet, the hip hop community became outraged and many of his peers, including Jay-Z and Kevin Hart, spoke out on how ridiculous this whole legal situation is. A few weeks after sentencing, Meek's legal team filed an emergency bail motion in the Pennsylvania Superior Court that asked for Meek to get released on bail immediately. Judge Brinkley ignored all the requests made by Meek's legal team, but eventually acknowledged the requests about a month later by denying the bail request after claiming Meek Mill is a flight risk and a danger to the community. It's also worth noting that while all this was going on, the media revealed that the FBI had been investigating Judge Brinkley since 2016 and had undercover agents monitoring Meek's court hearings. This investigation started after Meek's attorney made claims that Brinkley had shown bias by asking the rapper to leave Rock Nation and to return working with Charlie Mack. After Brinkley got word of these claims, she threatened to sue Meek Mill. Then, on February 14th, 2018, Meek's legal team filed a petition to get his sentencing and conviction vacated after Reggie Graham, the officer who arrested Meek back in 2008, had been added to a list of cops who had a history of racial bias, lying, and brutality. This petition also included a statement from a former Philadelphia police officer who said that Graham lied about Meek aiming a firearm at him during his arrest, a claim that Meek Mill had denied from the very beginning. Less than a week after this petition was filed, Judge Brinkley granted Meek a post-conviction hearing that went nowhere. But on March 15th, 2018, Meek received another big break in his case after the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office submitted a filing that revealed that they did not oppose to Meek's bail petition, which hinted that Meek will be released soon. 
Five days later, Judge Brinkley's personal attorney, Charles Peruto Jr., announced that they will be suing Meek Mill's management and legal team over the claims they made about Brinkley trying to extort Meek. After this was made public, Meek's legal team filed a motion to have Judge Brinkley removed from the case. But before any action could take place, Judge Brinkley was able to deny Meek's request to be released during the April 2nd court hearing, which basically confirmed that Brinkley has now turned Meek's case into a personal vendetta. Two weeks later, the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office recommended that Meek should be released, and on April 24th, 2018, that's exactly what happened. Meek was finally released from prison. A day after Meek's release, Judge Brinkley revealed that she refused to remove herself from Meek's case and claims that she has given the rapper a fair trial the whole time and will continue to do so. Meek's legal team then starts to bring to light that Brinkley was in a car accident in 2016, where she apparently suffered severe brain trauma, which could possibly affect her ability to perform professionally. His legal team also brought up that Brinkley allegedly laughed at one of Meek's witnesses early on in the case, but Brinkley denies all these claims. The case went pretty quiet for some time, but then, on July 24th, 2019, over a year after his release, the Superior Court of Pennsylvania granted Meek's appeal and overturned his 2008 conviction, as well as ordered that a new trial will not involve Judge Brinkley. This hearing then took place a month later on August 27, 2019, and ended with Meek Mill pleading guilty to a misdemeanor gun charge, which finally put an end to Meek's 12-year legal battle. This is Meek Mill's first time experiencing complete freedom since he was 18 years old, and it was long overdue. Meek Mill has now launched a prison reform movement and is really focusing on helping people who are in similar situations that he was in. I hope Meek continues to stay on this positive path and that he can help put an end to the probation trap that many Americans tend to find themselves victims of. Well, there you have it, the criminal history of Meek Mill. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos just like this one. I plan on uploading three times a week, so feel free to hit that notification bell as well to be notified whenever we upload. Also, comment down below on who you want to see a criminal history video on next. That's all I have for today. I'm out.